Join me for a hymn sing at the 2024 Issues Etc. Making the Case Conference, Friday, July 12th, and Saturday, July 13th at Concordia University, Chicago. This year's theme, Hymns for the Battle. Learn more and register at issuesetc.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. LHF is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod dedicated to translating and publishing the books of our Lutheran faith into more than 100 languages for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. Learn how you can take part in their work at lhfmissions.org. Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The early Christians knew that there was no greater honor in all the world than suffering insults and injury for the name of their Savior. They knew that that was a sign of their blessedness. It was, in an odd way, actually a seal of their own salvation. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the book of 1 Peter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Greetings, people loved by God. A brief recap from our last study. Peter said nearly 2,000 years ago, the end of all things is at hand. Huh? Well, the key is to remember that to the Lord, a thousand years is as a day and a day as a thousand years. And for any one of us, Our end of all things may very well be at hand. No guarantee how long any of us have in this pilgrimage. So Peter urged us, mindful of the end, to be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of our prayers. And with this, to keep on loving each other earnestly, remembering that it is the duty of love to cover a multitude of sins. Not that our love covers our sins by earning forgiveness. Rather, our love exercises itself in covering over the sins of others and still continuing to love them. We are to show an ungrudging hospitality and to use whatever gifts we've been given stewardship of to serve one another. No Christian is without a gift that he or she can use to bless others. He gave just two for instances. If your gift is speaking, that is preaching or teaching, then we should speak as oracles of God, thus making sure that everything we utter is actually God's word and not our own bright ideas. And then if your gift is serving, to serve with all the strength that God supplies for the task. The goal is never to glorify ourselves, but that others might come to glorify God through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs all the glory and the dominion eternally. A reading from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you also may rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, What will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. 1 Peter 4, verses 12 through 19. Let us pray. Everlasting God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Grant us your grace, so that we may make good and diligent study of Holy Scripture, seek and find Christ therein, and through him have eternal life. 
graciously grant it, dear Lord God. Amen. Ready to ponder today's passage together? Let's get into it. Verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Although Jesus foretold sufferings for his own, see John 16, verse 33, and St. Paul bluntly said in 2 Timothy 3, 12, indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Still, we always seem to be surprised whenever it comes along in our lives. St. Peter is trying to teach us that this, far from being abnormal, is actually the normal experience among those who have been baptized into Christ Jesus and who seek to live their lives in communion with him. It's not strange. It's not even out of the ordinary. The world sniffs the whiff of resurrection that we give off and hates and fears it and tries with might and main to stamp it out. But God uses this to help us learn to live by faith in his promises. In fact, sufferings in this age are his normal modus operandi by which he constantly seeks to strengthen us in our faith, our trust in him. For a relatively long time, we've been living in a culture that has been at least somewhat shaped by and hospitable toward our faith. Those days are now over, and we're back to people regarding Christians as the enemy and unenlightened and even disloyal. And so persecutions come back. Like those to whom Peter first wrote, we need to train ourselves to expect such treatment and not to grumble about it. It's our lot since we've been joined to the crucified and risen Lord. And rather than griping, St. Peter urges us instead, verse 13, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you also may rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. When people maltreat us because of our faith, this is actually a cause for rejoicing. Jesus had concluded his beatitudes with the same exhortation, Matthew 5, verses 11 and 12. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Then remember how we saw Peter and the other apostles live that out before our eyes when we studied the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 41. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. When the persecution comes our way, because of our confession of Jesus. That is never a moment for sorrow, but for great rejoicing. We know that sharing his suffering now, we will certainly share in his glory on the day of his appearing. As St. Paul once said, 2 Timothy 2, verses 12 and 13, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. St. Peter makes this explicit, verse 14. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The early Christians knew that there was no greater honor in all the world than suffering insults and injury for the name of their Savior. They knew that that was a sign of their blessedness. It was, in an odd way, actually a seal of their own salvation. It showed that others recognized the truth about them, that they were blessed of God and that his Holy Spirit, the Spirit that will glorify Christ's people at the last day, was truly resting upon them. As 16th century reformer Martin Luther expressed this so beautifully, Furthermore, he is not only a spirit who makes us glorious, but he is also a spirit whom we glorify. The work of glorification is ascribed especially to the Holy Spirit, just as he glorified Christ. Now the same spirit, says the apostle, rests upon you because the name of Christ rests upon you. This spirit is evil spoken of by them, 
for he must endure the worst kind of blasphemy and slander. Therefore do not be concerned about this blasphemy. It is directed against the Spirit, who is the Spirit of glory. Do not worry. He will surely avenge it and will raise you to a position of honor. This is the comfort we Christians have. Beautiful. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. He's just returning to the theme he introduced back in chapter 2, verse 20. There is no blessedness in being punished for one's own faults and failings. But he goes on, verse 16. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. So it is not at all suffering that is glorious, but specifically suffering as a Christian meeting the hardships that come upon us because we are Christ's own, with grace and thankfulness and receiving all of them to the glory of God. Verse 17, For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Second century catechist Clement of Alexandria explains, this is the judgment which will occur in times of persecution. The Apology to the Augsburg Confession helpfully teaches us of this passage. Besides, saints are subject to death and all general afflictions, as 1 Peter 4.17 states, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Although these afflictions are for the most part punishments of sin, yet in the godly they serve a better end, namely to exercise them that they may learn amid trials to seek God's aid and to acknowledge the distrust of their own hearts and so forth. That's such an important point. The sufferings of this life are not to be received by Christians as signs of God's disfavor, but as gifts for the strengthening of our faith. And Peter goes on, verse 18. And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Now he's quoting Proverbs 11.31 again from the Greek version, the Septuagint. The idea of the righteous being scarcely saved recalls our Lord Jesus' saying in Mark 10, verse 24, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. Salvation is not an easy thing. And so Jesus warned in Matthew 7, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. The early church sadly learned how true Jesus' words were. When the sufferings came along and all you had to do to keep your earthly life and your earthly stuff was to deny Jesus. There were not a few who capitulated in fear when push came to shove. We dare never imagine that it's easy to be a faithful Christian and to persist in faith to the end. Verse 19, Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Peter seems to have in mind especially those who are suffering persecution that will end in their martyrdom. He urges them to suffer, persisting in doing what is good, that is, confessing Christ and loving their enemies, all the while entrusting their souls to a faithful creator. Creator there is a good reminder that he who created us all out of nothing will have zero difficulty in restoring us on the last day, raising our bodies from death, and meanwhile, guarding our souls safe in his gracious keeping. And right there is where we'll call our halt for today. Next up, my goodness, we'll begin the fifth and final chapter of St. Peter's first epistle. As we hear the apostle speak as a fellow elder or presbyter, exhorting his fellow presbyters to shepherd the flock. Remember how Jesus had restored Peter in John 21, feed my lambs, tend my sheep. They are to be examples to the flock, renouncing the way of domineering. And then, when the chief shepherd appears, they too will receive the crown of glory that never fades away. The younger are to submit to their elders, and everyone 
is to be clothed with humility, since God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Till next time then, be beloved by God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, Lutheran Public Radio.